Hey, what's up, garden friends? I'm sitting, I meant to zoom in on the parking meter and then just, I got distracted by how far the phone could zoom and just, I kept going with it. Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I got put way too much money in that meter. Right when I start vlogging, someone's gonna pull up right next to me and says, of course it's gonna get awkward. There's a bad angle right up the nose hole. It's a beautiful day. It's like 61 degrees, stupid windy. Why my hair is a mess and skin's all dried out even though I keep moisturizing it. It's, all, it's so freaking windy. But hey, that's spring for you, right? Nice and breezy. I was thinking it might be fun to go by a nursery and pick up some pansies. I know Sugar Creek has a whole bunch of just like pansies and houseplants in stock. People aren't planting much else this time of year. There's hellebores and shrubs and those things. Look at these giant planters. Every time I walk past those, I just want to stuff them full of plants. And you know, I love to pick up the camera when I'm being indecisive and drag y'all along for the process. There's still going to be some cold. Pansies should be able to take it. I just think it'd be nice to pop some color outside and I just, I want to get my hands in the dirt and play with some nice green plants. So maybe that's what we'll do. I, th I think it'd be fun. Would that be nice? If I do that, then I have to remember, gotta go by the hardware store sometime this week and get a new hose and hose reel and get the water set back up outside. Cause if I'm putting things outside, I need to water them. I've been doing it by hand for the last several months with the water turned off cause it's been cold, but I don't, I'm, I'm over it. I don't wanna do that anymore. If y'all been following the channel for a long time, you know, I've had struggles trying to find a hose reel that fits my freaking hose. I have a one inch garden hose. It was just a random thing they had at Lowe's one time and I was like, that's nice, big, thick, girthy hose, lots of water pressure, but it, it doesn't fit any hose reel unless you buy these great big industrial ones that cost a few hundred bucks and they're really ugly. Like they're meant to be put inside of a warehouse or something of the sort. So I think it's time to just cave in and just get a new hose, something that will fit into a hose reel so I don't have a hose strung all over my patio all spring, summer, and fall. That's always something that bugs me. It's a pain in the butt to try and coil up a hose when you don't have a hose reel. So now I'm trying to think, what would I want to put some spring annuals in? I would want to put them in the two pool planters that have the spring grove arborvitaes. And I have two more planters that have some peach trees in them. They got planted up last year. Maybe the two by the pool, so that's six. Not by the pool, by the steps. By the pool, those really big, I think they're called Miami planters. That'd be a good start. That's a lot of pansies though, like a lot. I would need to probably buy two flats. I don't know if that's smart to do this. Maybe, I, should I wait another week? I really don't want to. I already talked about it this much too. Actually, I don't really feel like thinking about it anymore. I'd rather just go get them. If it gets really cold, lose some pansies, it's okay, but I doubt that'll happen. And they should be good into the upper teens for very brief, periods. Don't worry. I made it. It didn't turn red. I made it right through that yellow. I'll make it through this one too. Just watch. See? Boom. No problem. Yellows on this stretch are really long. All right. I'm going to cut out. We'll pick up at the nursery and have a look at some pansies and some houseplants. Houseplant and some houseplants. Oh, this would be the most unfortunate spot to be if something were to happen to the truck in front of me. Anybody need a porta potty? I would assume that that's empty, but bet your ass I'm gonna try and get around it. Oh yeah, so the hose thing. I meant to elaborate on that. This time of year, if you're gonna plant things early, it's really important that the plants can get watered. It's always important that we can water our plants, right? But what I mean is the air is very dry. It's more windy, precipitation, and uh, the plants aren't going to root out anywhere near as quickly, if at all, for several weeks when it's cooler. Our nighttime temps are still easily in the 30s most nights. So uh, it's not gonna be like some of the other larger shrubs that have been in their containers longer. And I can get out there like every week to two weeks, depending on what kind of rain we're getting, and give them a drink with little annuals like pansies. They don't need a heavy soaking, but they need water pretty much every single day. So part of what I have to decipher when I'm deciding when to plant is also when I can turn my water back on. So right now the water's been shut off so that, you know, the pipes don't freeze and explode. They don't do the frost-free piping around here, at least not, not, it's not common. I don't see that very often. The coldest night I see coming up is like 28 degrees and that shouldn't hurt the pipes. I usually don't even shut my water off till it's like consistently going to be way down into the 20s. So should be good to go ahead and set up some water and 
get some annuals going. That's the hope. I know the kales and cabbages that are in the planters with those spring grove arborvitaes, arborvitaes, however you want to say it. Those aren't looking very good from that freeze we had back in December. Need to pluck those out and just, I don't know, just get some color into those containers. I want to get that started. I need to do more cleaning up outside, but that'll be a separate video. I just want to play around out there and have some fun. It's been tax week. That's all I've done for the last several days is taxes. I need to let loose and just have fun outside in the garden. Need to get my hands dirty. Oh no, oh no, they're fully stocked. I wasn't, I figured they just had pansies. There's potential, I might get in a lot of trouble. I don't, I'd only need pansies, but I see hyacinths. I see some, what look like some greens, maybe some lettuce, lots of pottery. I need to get a new pot. For the Macaulay's, not Macaulay's, the McDowell, the philodendron, I need a container for that. But I remembered that just here for pansies, that's it. That's it. I'm not, I need to behave myself. Oh yeah, and green tea happened. I know, I said a couple weeks ago that I was cutting out the caffeine. I was walking past the Starbucks when I was down there, getting my suit fitted, and it just, it sounded so good, and it is. I'm not gonna be saying the same in like half an hour when my heart's pounding out of my throat, but it just tastes so good. Water gets really boring after a while. I wanted something refreshing. You know, whatever, I'll run an extra mile or something when I get home, it's fine. Hey, remember how I talked about the wind? That could be a problem when it comes to filming. So there might just be a bunch of shots of things without me talking. Uh, that's probably fine. Y'all could probably use a break from me talking so much anyways. If I'm trying to remember, last year I did a bunch of these lemon frizzle berries, which I love. Is that what they're called? Lemon sizzle, fizzle, frizzle sizzle lemon berry. These, aren't they beautiful? Always end up giving myself a headache over deciding what to put where. So I think it would be smart to just pick one color and get a whole bunch of those instead of having a whole bunch to mix and match these Mugos. These are really cute. Oh my god, those are adorable. And every year when I get pansies, it's hard to find flats that are solid, like all one thing, and then I end up not being able to decide what to put where. I'm here early enough that that shouldn't be a problem. I'm holding my hand over the mic, so hopefully that will help. I know these don't contrast that much with the lemon frizzle sizzle thingies, but I just, I tend to just like the regular purple and yellow pansies, so I'm probably just gonna stick with that, even though there's not much of a contrast. This, this is good. Okay, should I get one more? I think I should probably get one more. I think, do a mix and match. I've got the Matrix Morpheus, that's just the, you know, yellow and purple, and then throw in a couple more of the lemon, why do I, why do I keep calling them the wrong thing? Frizzle says the lemon berries. That should, work. No, it's not a ton of contrast, but it's gonna be fine. Ivory Prince. That's the name on these. I think, is this upside down? I think it is. There we go. Ivory Prince. Nice. They have big upright flowers on them. I like those. I'm not gonna get them. I'm very tempted, but I'm not going to, because then I have to find a place to put them as a perennial, and I don't want to do that. Ooh. Oh, I love the color on this one. It has the flowers that hang downward, so I don't really know if, if I really care about the flowers, if I'm not going to be able to see it. Maybe in a container that might be... I could just get one. Whew, holy freaking wind! I, I had to stop with the recording. There were people inside the greenhouse, so yeah, that gets weird. Houseplant selection, fantastic. That's some really nice looking stuff. That's some of the Adam philodendrons, or thematophyllums, really, which were looking so cute and tiny and adorable and lots of blue star fern. Just lots of really nice, healthy looking house plants, really fresh ones. I loved those little Prince of Orange philodendrons. I was tempted to grab some of those, but I didn't because, well, I have one at home that needs to be repotted, so that didn't seem like a smart decision. All right, gotta take care of what you have before you get more. And I completely forgot to look at pottery, which is fine. It's too windy. I'll be back. I need to get that plant repotted. I also need to take a double check. I need to go back and look at my other pots that I have outside because I feel like I have to have something that I would like to use for that philodendron. Okay, got a car full of plants. Grabbed a couple houseplant, tropical type plants. See those later when I get home. I think it's going to storm, so chances are I'll be cutting back on a different day because I'll probably just be leaving these plants in the car for right now because there's no reason to take them out if it's just going to be windy and wet. He's being so good. It's frisbee, fell right in the middle of the pool cover, and he's like, I'm not, I'm not allowed to go get it. Knows better. I need to stay on track. Okay, home. Got the pansies. We have a closer look at them. Aren't they beautiful? 
These are the, I know I couldn't say it when I was there, Frizzle Sizzle Lemon Berry. Talked about these pansies last year. I'm a big fan because, do I need to explain? Look at that. What a beautiful flower. I really like the classic, just the Matrix purple and yellow pansies and violas. Just nothing too fancy, just keeping it simple. But the Frizzle Sizzles, they have that purple and yellow with lots of extraness going on to them. So in total, between the uh, Frizzle Sizzle lemon berries and then just the regular Matrix Morpheus, which are these back here. I don't know if I gave a good shot of those. They're just the yellow and purple pansies. I think I got about a flat and a half of each, something like that. I know I should have probably gone with just some yellows and whites and plain ones that I can mix them all together to get that spring look, but I, I didn't want to do that. I ended up getting bogged down when I have too many colors. I think I tried to talk about this while I was at the nursery. The, trying to decide how to get the combination going, sometimes just it doesn't work with my brain. I mean, it does. It always comes out nice, but I end up having to put more thought into it than I really feel like doing. I just want to plop some pansies into these two containers here maybe bring around the peach trees. They're over there by the driveway and have one on each side of the steps here, but the that pool cover, that's so ugly. And I grabbed two hellebores, which I showed all these at the nursery, but we can just have a closer look at them. Now they have the different camera out. Sandy Shores, Honeymoon Series, Lenten Rose, part shade to full shade. They had these sitting right out in the full sun at the nursery. Maybe they get afternoon shade where that table was. I'm not sure. I was there in the morning. I know traditionally with hellebores, I usually have best luck with about part sun. Good bright morning light and then filtered in the afternoon. I grabbed two of these and I, d I was thinking I would put them in a hanging basket, make a basket to go right there by the door. And then I was like, well, but that's like pretty intense afternoon sun there. So I didn't think it through. I just, I got excited about the flowers. I was checking out the person who was bringing up everything said that this is one of her favorites and that the flowers are really beautiful. I'm always on the fence with that. Good idea to get online and Google, get the images so you can see a rundown of the flowers because it can be hard to tell from pictures what it's actually going to look like. And you know, hellebores aren't cheap. So I'm glad that that person also said that they look really nice. That's going to be good. I just, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. But I got them and I like them. Well, I shouldn't say I don't know what I'm going to do. I have an idea. I was thinking back here, it's a mess right now. We're going to be doing a lot of cleaning up out here next week if the weather is better. In front of each one of these bamboos with some pansies around them. Not, it's not something I'm going to put too much thought into because this is, it's so temporary. I don't like to go overboard with the spring planters because it's just, it's for like what, six to eight weeks. And then I start moving on into summer annuals and perennials. I just, I don't want to, don't want to do too much. I'm sure I will do more. This is just to start because I've already been fighting the urge to go to all the other nurseries. I'm like, well, I should get some daffodils and some tulips. I should really, these should just be screaming spring right now, but also no, they, I need to stop because we will still have frost. I mean, there's going to be a frost tonight, which I'm not worried about with the pansies or the hellebores, but getting into the bulbs and things. I just need to be more careful. It's two more weeks. That's not a big deal. And I really want to get this pool cover off of here. Those are all things I can think about over the next few hours. Toby and Turbo are about to have a play date. Our friend coming over who got a puppy. It's a pit poodle mix. So they get to meet his name's Peanut Butter and Toby's going to see his best friend Gotti who's 13, maybe 14. No, he's 13. Going on 14. They haven't seen each other since before COVID because they're old men. So they don't get to get together. <laughs> as often as they used to because uh you know aches and pains and whatnot I'd have to be careful with them <laughs> when they're out playing so here's some quick dog playing stuff and then move on to planting up some pansies and me making up my mind about whether or not i want to move the peach trees over here you excited toby you see Gotti? where's Gotti? where's your friend where's Gotti? you're gonna see him he's gonna be here in just a minute i know you guys missed each other he's gonna be over there you go see Gotti? where's Gotti? where is he where's your friend you waiting for your friend? Toby, where's Gotti? Where is he? Where's your friend? Hey, <laughs> baby. Okay. He's gonna meet the puppy first. And then Gotti's coming back. Who's that? It's who's that? Hi, baby. Hello. Hello. Toby's like, oh, great. Another puppy. Another one. Why? Why so many puppies? You good boy. He's such a sweetheart. Look at that face. 
Look at that face. You can't because it never holds still. I promise, Gotti's here. I wasn't teasing you. He's here. You're going to get to see Gotti. I promise. I don't think he believes me. He's like, hey, that wasn't Gotti. I know you're tricking me. He's here. You're going to get to see your friend. <laughs> you can't punch him and then run and hide under my legs. That's not how this works. I'm not going to protect you. Don't be a punk. We also, he's, if you want to play hard, he's, you got the wrong one. He's not the one. Got something you can play rough with in there. He'll kick your ass if you want him to. Okay, that was perhaps one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. Those two, Turbo and Peanut Butter, best friends. And we realized, my friend and I, we were sitting out here talking that Gotti and Toby are about the same age apart as Turbo and Peanut Butter. Turbo's about 15 months older than Peanut Butter. Gotti's probably about 15, maybe 16 months older than Toby. So it was kind of touching to see the, the new generation of dog friends coming in. This person who was over here, we've been friends since we were kids, teenagers, so we go way back. It was just nice, good times, getting together. I went ahead, you can probably already see it, brought the peach trees around. I wasn't sure about it, but then I just, I saw them sitting in the driveway and I was like, well, I'm not gonna wanna view those beautiful flowers from all the way over here. I'm never gonna see them in the driveway. That's why I got them last year, was so that I could have some color out here by the pool in the springtime and then when summer rolls around and I'm putting palm trees in these pots they can go back to the driveway and have the nice red foliage on each side of the fence that that was I'm pretty sure that was the reason I think it was they look okay to me these are bonfire peaches one of my favorites that nice red foliage pretty peachy pink blossoms autumn fruits kind of meh not really one to eat but you could not super flavorful dwarf grafted I planted these up last year with some daffodils and a whole bunch of pansies and the daffodils are coming back in this one. You can see them starting to pop up from down there right at the base, but not in the other one. No action in here. And actually, I don't know if I even transplanted the bulbs. I think it may have just been happenstance that they ended up in this container over here as opposed to that one. So that's something I'll keep an eye out for. I think I need to run to the hardware store. And by need to, I mean I want to because this is bothering me. So when I said I'll keep an eye out, I meant let's run by the hardware store real quick and see if they have any daffodils that are just getting going about this size. It's a symmetry thing. I need to look at hoses and hose reels too. I need to start scoping that whole situation out, figuring out what I want to do with all of that. And uh, yeah, I'm, there's so much more I want to talk about. My brain started spinning with the ideas. Oh, and the caffeine. I haven't had it in, what, two and a half, three weeks. So that's, that's doing its thing right now too. Oh, Turbo found a coconut. See that? You see it? The gates are open. Favorite time of year and they open up the gates. You can just walk right into the gardens instead of having to go in through the thing and then walk all the way around and maybe there's something. There probably isn't much to look at right now, but still exciting. Even more exciting is just shut the hell up, go inside and see what's going on in there. Uh, how long has it been since I was in my backyard saying I didn't want to go too overboard and be all extra with my spring planters? That, that may have changed my mind. There's just so much to choose from. Got tulips and hyacinths. They have the tete a tets, daffodils, the teeny tiny ones, which I don't think is what I have in the other planters, but it may just have to work. I don't mind it. Lots of pansies, lots of tulips. It's, I need to go look at the hoses. I'm coming back for these. And here's, here's the house plants. It doesn't look any different than last time I was in here. Looks pretty much the same. Okay, we good now? Move on, do something else? All right, music's loud. Holding this right up to my face. It's gonna be breathy, sorry. I have to talk real choppy so I can break this up so things don't get dim. I don't even wanna finish saying that. They only have one three quarter inch hose and it's bright red just like what I have. I don't wanna do that. If I'm getting a new hose, I want it to be brown or black, something that doesn't stand out as much, but there's a nice looking hose reel over here. Is that a nice looking one? Yeah, I like that. 
It's nice to explore the options. I didn't like the options, and that's okay. They're still getting stuff in. There'll be more to look at later. It's just that one. Just this one. You see that? Isn't that a beautiful pansy? And, uh, okay, of course. Grab the wrong one. What a nice color. And of course the rest of them are just white. Huh. I kind of like these. These ones that are that blush red. I think that's a good color. I like those. Yep, back in the car and home. I know, we're all over the place. Welcome to spring. Welcome to caffeine. It's been a while. <laughs> How have y'all been? The heat feels so good in here. I don't want to get out. It cooled off a lot. There's supposed to be some storms rolling in. One of the reasons I want to get stuff done out here, there are a lot of, a lot of plants happened. More than probably necessary, but you know, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Already seen the majority of these because, you know, they're just at the store. So you were there. Just another flat of super, super cheap pansies in a better assortment of colors than what I got over there. Those are still my favorites, but for a hanging basket, which is what I'm planning on doing with those, I, I grabbed a like a cheap hanging basket there. Probably gonna want some more color if I'm gonna pair these with the hellebore that I showed before that has that really nice sunsetty looking flower to it. I think that those would complement better, just like having a complete mixture than going with a single tone underneath it. Really, it would probably look good either way. But I'm still on the fence about using the hellebores in the hanging basket. Cause like I said, it's afternoon sun over there and when it's cool outside, you can get away with those things, can really push it. The problem is where I live, sometimes spring days will be in the 50s they could be in the 30s or they could be like 90 degrees a complete and total roller coaster here in the springtime so when we have random days where it's in the 90s that sun that's not going to work over there for the hellebores so i also grabbed <laughs> some of those drop and grow bulbs where it's just an assortment of daffodils tulips and hyacinths because like that could i could just drop one of those in here that look nice also not usually a fan of the faux wicker just because I've seen what happens to these in the sun, but the coconut dries out so fast in the spring. The humidity is its kind of lacking until we start to move closer towards summer. We have a dry spell. Last few years, anyways, we've had some dry spells and the coconut ones, I'll usually line them with plastic and even still, they end up drying out very, very quickly. So I just thought this would be nice and I'm probably going to be piecing my basket together this year instead of just doing it in one full swoop because nobody has trailers and they usually don't for a few more weeks and I can't I'm not I can't do hanging baskets without trailers I just can't do it it's not I, I'm not capable of it there has to be something coming over the edge of the container so this will look nicer just sitting around on the table or wherever I put it than just a coconut wine basket would until I get a trailer to go in there and I would like to get some lobularia I always have to have some alyssum in my containers by the windows because I like to crack the windows and you get that nice sweet fragrance in the house in the morning time it's just refreshing and lovely and then I also grabbed eight of the tete a tete te a tete I don't French not my thing if that were Spanish no problem but whatever that name is tete a tete Tata te 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 te. This is the internet. Somebody will correct me and let us all know down in the comments section. However you pronounce it, that's what those are. They're a great daffodil. <laughs> I've grown them many times. I have some over in the landscape from past planters that I've done. And when I'm done with those planters, I just toss them into the landscape. They're a really, really short one with teeny tiny little yellow daffodil flowers on them. Pretty prolific too. An earlier to bloom than a lot of other daffodil types. And then I grabbed some pre-started pink hyacinth bulbs because I was thinking and the umbrella planter here, or I just I randomly shoved some pansies. It might look nice to put like three of the hyacinths, some of the tete a tetes, tete a tete, did, did I do it? A ring of those, and if I can find some Alyssa in a few weeks, pop some of those in there too, just for some nice color and fragrance. I wanted hyacinths by the table for the fragrance. I'll have to remember to put the umbrella down for a few hours a day so that they get some sunlight. That will be nice. I got, I got multiples of those drop and grow assortments because with these planters right here, I was figuring since I couldn't remember the variety of daffodil that was over there, that I would just mix up a couple of those drop and grows into each one of those so that it looks like there's supposed to be a random assortment of bulbs inside of each one instead of having an, a whole thing of unevenness on each side. That just made the most sense to me. And yeah, so here we are. It's just getting started. First day of March, March 1st. Nurseries are opening up and uh, already starting to do some damage, but it's worthwhile. It's so nice to be outside. 
It is so nice to see something that you had planned out, you had envisioned a year ago, starting to come together with the peach tree and the arb and the planter right there. <laughs> you know, one thing I didn't account for when I was buying the plants is that the peach tree, when I moved it into the containers that go in the driveway, that it was a downgrade. This over here, 24, maybe 26 inch pot, and this is a 20 inch. That's all right though, can make it all fit. Maybe, well, eh, eh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can make it all fit. Just because I have all of the pansies doesn't mean I have to squeeze them all into these containers. But you know, I'm going to try. It's not like they're going to spread. That's one thing about the pansies. They just kind of hang tight, right? Come in here, by the way, sun right on my screen. Can't see anything I'm doing. At the very least, there will be shots at the end in case this isn't coming out nicely right now. Oh, that bulb doesn't look too good. That's just an unspreaded tulip though, that's okay. I can kind of see what's going on here. The thing with the tulips and the bulbs and everything is when you are getting them going, you can separate them out inside of these containers, but you want to do it before they're really big and before they're blooming. You need to be careful to not disturb too many of the roots. Sometimes you have to come in and just gently peel them back and then work the roots out from underneath to loosen them. You can get right underneath them and slowly pull back. Normally they'll pop right out. Normally won't end up doing much damage that way as long as they haven't rooted out too, too much. This might be the only year I can do much of anything like this with these containers because the peach tree is going to root out and fill out enough that it's going to be pretty difficult to get holes dug down here around the trunk without doing damage. And with the peach tree, those flowers to me are way, way, way more important than having some spring bulbs inside these containers. I don't want to go tearing on the roots on these very much at all. I can already tell I'm not going to be able to plant a lot of these as deeply as they need to be planted. I'm trying to get as much soil off of the roots as I can. The soil level was about up to there on a lot of these. I don't want those to be exposed, especially the tulips and the hyacinth. They're going to need to go nice and deep. And I can also add more soil to the containers. That's just going to slowly be a natural progression as I go and add more things in here. That soil level is going to get up a lot higher. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? As far as the bulbs are concerned, daffs in the back because they're the tallest and probably the soonest to bloom. Tulips are in the next row, which you can't really see because they're still way down there. I made sure to bury them nice and deep. Well, as deep as they were, there's that white line along the bulb. And there are four hyacinths that are tucked away down in there too that should start popping up here in the next week or two. And I alternated the Matrix Morpheus, just the regular purple and yellow standard pansy with the frizzle sizzle lemon berries. Isn't that just an awesome flower? Love the flowers on those. And I like that there's varying shades of blues and purples and yellows, but it's not so drastic that you have to worry about planting them all together. They still fit fine. I'll blend nicely with each other. The only thing I didn't do here that I really should have was add some slow release, which isn't going to do much this time of year when it's cool anyways, but it just probably would have been a good idea. I just completely forgot until I was almost done. But I can always add in some bone meal and whatnots to the surface of the soil as I water these in. No trailers. As I said, nobody has them. Not yet. They will soon. Nursery just opened up. Did that one down there too. Same exact thing. Nothing drastically different about either one other than, well, sunlight. I think that's going to be fun to watch. Getting to watch the bulbs do their thing. They'll have a nice succession of blooms. Pansies should keep up all their flowering down below and then hopefully in a couple weeks get some flowers out of the bonfire peaches. I'm really relieved that these are doing okay. We had that negative six back in December and it was multiple days of negative temperatures and these are in containers. They're a zone six. So I was just kind of keeping my fingers crossed and hoping they would do okay. They seem to be good. The lighting, this is the thing about filming outdoors. You can't really tell from here. So I sacrificed a flower and I just plucked it off one of the little flower buds and it was nice and green in there. All is good. I don't know about to the very ends of all the branches, but there's still life in it. And that's, that's what I wanted to see that they're not dead. All in all, I ended up using six of those pansy six packs. I think it was roughly three of each. Some of them, like they didn't all look great or they didn't have flowers on them. So I would move them to its own empty six pack. I just stuck with ones that were in bloom for the sake of the video. So you can see all the color down in the containers. Then the two dropping grows inside of each one and provide several weeks of nice, reliable color. The tulips, I have a thing with tulips and even hyacinths, they are just, they're beautiful, but the bloom time can be so short and the weather here is so unpredictable that I'm going to have to keep a close eye on the temperatures and just be ready to throw frost cloth over these for the next few weeks. And that's not, I do that anyways. I'm always keeping frost cloth tucked away and ready to go on top of the plants this time of year because I move a lot of them out too early. A couple more containers. That's, that's no big deal at all. So ideally what will happen next out here will be the 
leaf cleanup and all that debris getting picked up out here. Then I'm going to get the pool cover off. I won't get the pool turned on because I don't, honestly, I don't know how. There's a lot of stuff that's to get done with plumbing and chemicals and I just, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm sure I could do it, but I don't know what the steps are. But I'll pull the cover off, throw a pump in there so that the water's at least circulating, start to let some sun in there to help warm the water up so that the heater and everything can get going. Get these, I want them set kind of like this. The spring grove arborvitae right next to the peach, but they'll be closer in. The peach on the inside and the arborvitae, it'll look nice. Not like that, it'll be more like this one, more over towards the middle. And I'm going to hold off on these two planters, the one on each end with the spring grove arborvitaes in them, just because I have something I really want to do with them, but those plants aren't out at the nurseries yet, and it's just a smidge too soon to be planting what I want to plant around those. So it's going to wait a couple more weeks, but if I can find them in all the right colors, what I'm looking for, it's going to look really nice. Okay, the one thing I kind of screwed, I didn't screw up on, but last year when I had gotten the bonfire peaches to put in the blue containers, the big blue ones, knowing I was going to move them to the driveway into these ripple containers and then move those back over here for spring so there'd be some color out here. I had planned on uh, doing something that I, I just didn't, I don't really know how to execute it, but I, what I wanted to do was do nothing but grass underneath them with just a few daffodils. So it'd look like a little meadow right underneath the trees. The problem is I wanted to use wheat grass. I like the nice thick blades, but the way the temperatures move around, I don't think it would have done that well. And uh, I just, I didn't plan out trying to source the right kind of seed to do something like that. And then I went to a nursery that had plants and I was like, I must buy plants. But you gotta admit that would've looked pretty cool, wouldn't it? But uh, maybe next year, perhaps I'll do it in a different planter, something similar. It would just need to be in a nice sunny spot. I'd throw that out there. I think it'd look pretty neat. Somebody did something like that. Just a grassy planter with a flowering topiary of some type. Some, not these are topiary, but a standardized plant, standard looking tree of some sort. With the grass, just a couple daffodils, just a couple tulips, just something simple and all that nice green it would look really cool. This is nice too though. I'm glad that I stuck with using the frizzle sizzle lemon berries and then just the regular yellow and purples in those containers because I don't know what the assortment of those bulbs is going to look like. I don't know what the colors are of those flowers. So this way I'll have the same tones down below and then the same tones up top when that flower's up there. And then who knows what's gonna happen with the bulbs in the middle. The one disadvantage to doing those drop and grow things, I like the convenience when I buy my bulbs in the fall and plant them in the fall, the squirrels almost always dig them up and there are cages and things you can put around your bulbs. I just, I don't like messing with it. Just not really my thing. I like bulbs, tulips, their flowers are just so short lived and they take up space and you have to plan their depth just right to be able to plant above them with your annuals. Ugh, I just, I'd rather just, buy a couple of the ones that are pre-sprouted so I don't have to worry about it or think about it or store them or pre-chill my own. This is just so much easier. If my backyard was still full sun, different story. I would probably have bulbs planted absolutely everywhere. Lots of tulips and hyacinths, but over the years, as the trees have gotten bigger and things have gotten more shady back here, it's just the growth on what I did had started getting really wonky. That's why I mostly just stick with daffodils at this point because they can really go sun to part shade. Even, I mean, I have some plants in the deep shade and they're totally fine. There's some in the deep shade in my front yard. I don't know how they got there, but they're there and they come up every single year. It's the daffodils are awesome. I love daffodils. Daffodils are fun. They're fun to grow. Just sturdy plants seem to last a lifetime. I am on the fence right now about doing this one because I got to take the umbrella off. And it's not that easy to do uh, with one person. This is a 12 foot umbrella up here. It's just, it's a bit much. So that might have to wait. Really, I could probably shove some papers or something underneath there, get this plant label out of the way. And that would catch the dirt. It's just, I'm not liking the soil that's in here anymore. It's pretty mucky. I don't want to use it. I mean, look at that. See it? And it just, it's kind of gross looking, right? Uh, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Missing out on anything. None of these are blooming yet anyways. They're still just little bits of green. I'm not going to be putting any of the pansies in here because I'm reserving these for something else. That is beautiful. Hopefully be able to find a trailer and some alyssum next week so I can do the hanging basket, get that taken care of, and depending on the weather, maybe get that pool cover off and get things looking nice, get things kicked off out here. This has been fun. This has been nice. Being outside, it did cool off, so I'm kind of chilly. I'm actually really chilly. I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below going to be getting to a lot more stuff outside and a few things waiting on to get done in the growth space over the next few weeks. It's starting to feel like spring where you are? I certainly hope so because it's 
it's just fantastic. Fresh air. I say fresh air. I'm going to go inside and not be able to talk for two days because there's so much junk in the air, but it just feels nice to be outside. Y'all know what I mean. I have an extra one of these uh, because I don't know if I went over this. I know I talked about doing the hellebores and the hanging basket and then how that's probably not a great idea. They should probably go back here, which I would actually really like them over there anyways. So that this may end up being the centerpiece in that hanging basket. If not, I have family and friends in the area that I'm sure would love to have a little container thrown together with one of these drop and grows and some colorful pansies. Doesn't hurt to have some extras laying around. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. Oh, no, almost forgot. I, there were other plants from Sugar Creek that I said I would talk about. This will be quick, though. It's not a lot to show. Also, see the rain? Started raining. Got that project wrapped up just in time. I'm trying to be very careful with how I get these out of this bag. These are Tradescantias. They are brittle little plants. I don't want to break them. That kind of tangled up in that bag. A little bit smushed in there, which is fine. Just a couple of nanooks, a couple of very large and full nanooks. I planted a whole bunch of these that I had grown from cuttings at right in the front of this garden bed last year. I want to do that again, which means it's, what is it, March now? So I have a couple months to cut these up, get a lot of cuttings going so that those will fill in that space nicely. So that's really all that is. I just got them to chop them and prop them. And then in here, look at this. Isn't it adorable? It'd be even cuter if it wasn't on the bag. Look at it. So stinking cute. It's a bonsai ficus. Has a good shape to it. I've had trouble finding good ficus for bonsai over the last few years. Usually they're just like almost like a topiary, which that's not my thing. I like to have at least three stems to work with so that I can wire them and bend them and get a good shape to them. This one was just perfect. And by a long time, I mean uh, since I was a kid. I used to have to go to Seattle when I wanted to find nice little ficus to use for bonsai. There was a nursery in the area that was called Honors, and they closed down, I think it was during the recession, but the owners, I'm pretty sure they retired. They used to sell a good amount of bonsais that hadn't been, you know, already shaped, just starter plants, but they were very pricey. The Timberwinds, which is also out here, they have a pretty good selection of things to use too, but I still, I haven't seen a ficus that I liked like this one in a really, really... Really long time, needs some water. Gonna drop some leaves, not surprised by that because, you know, ficus. And I have fun with this one, get that into a pot. I'm probably gonna wait on that until it's nicer outside. It's a lot easier to get these things going outdoors than in the house. Most bonsai are much better outdoors than inside. So I'm just gonna keep it watered. And when it's nice enough outside, I'll tease those roots out, get it pot up into something, wire up the trunk and have more fun with it. It'll just adjust to all that much better with the conditions outside. That look nice? The little peaches? Can't wait for those to open up and flower. Okay, I already said goodbye, so probably not gonna do it again, but those are the three little plants that I picked up while I was in there. Oh, hey, baby. Hey, baby, such a sweetheart. Yes, you are such a good boy. So proud of him with how he played with that little puppy and with the old man, both of them, Toby and Gotti. He was so gentle, so good. Oh, the windmill palm. Wanted to give an update on this one. Remember this one had stem rot? and I had been treating it, and it is finally, finally pushing out all the wonky, just messed up leaves from the cold damage, and it's gonna, it's gonna take a few fronds, gonna need to push a few of them out, but it's feeling nice and sturdy. I'm probably gonna go ahead and do another treatment with the fungicide just to be safe because things are still kind of wobbly and wonky down on the inside, but that's encouraging. I would like to have this outdoors right now, but just doesn't seem like a good idea. We, windmill palms can take the colds to an extent, but we're gonna have the roller coaster temperatures for the next month or so. So I figure if it's pushing out the new growth and doing okay inside, then I should just leave it. Yeah, we'll talk more about that next week. So that's a whole thing when it comes to having them inside and then moving them outside, you have to deal with the change in airflow and windmill palms, Washingtonias, they're a whole bunch of palms actually, uh, Robolinis, the pygmy date palms. They sit in an area where they're not dealing with breezes and things at all, just like stale air. I have some fans in here, but just, you know, it's normal in my kitchen. Not a ton of airflow around the plant. Then move it outside in the springtime and there's wind all over it, the branches on here, they just will just, they'll just go completely limp. So that's something I may have to deal with. I've been on the fence about whether I should just go ahead and move it out as soon as those push out since it's going to probably have new, another adjustment to go through. 
I don't know. Something to think about. Anyways, that's all. Hope everybody had a good time. Is having a great life, a great weekend, and doing well.